Typically, um, we always feature up and coming new artists, but today's, today's show is going to be something really special. Um, I was at a conference just the other week uh, in Columbus, and I, one of the panelists was, was interviewing, uh, was listening to some young kids' uh, work, and he goes, um, you know, what you really have to do is study the masters. And, and it really rang true to a lot of people in the room. I mean, you need to study where your music came from. Like Michael Jackson didn't just, just learn all those steps. He, listened, he watched Fred Astaire. He watched uh, everybody, James Brown. He, he learned from, his, from, his, from the people that came before him. And uh, so when we had the opportunity to bring my next guest on, uh, we couldn't say no because it's, uh, his, this guy is an amazing uh, R&B legend. And I want to introduce everybody to Mr. Bunny Sigler. Could I comment on something you just said before yeah. I forget? I always forget. You talk about Michael Jackson and the steps. Uh, I just came from the doctor. <laughs> I hurt my ankle doing the moonwalk. <laughs> you know where the moonwalk came from? No. James Brown used to do an old step called the camel walk. And Michael is doing it backwards. Camel uh -huh. walk is forward and Michael is doing it backwards. Well, my journey started, everybody, first the name Bunny Sigler came. I was born the day after Easter. Uh, that's why they call me Bunny. Great. When I was born, Bugs Bunny wasn't big, so right. that's why I didn't get the bugs on it. <laughs> But uh, I woke, I've been singing. The, the earliest thing I can remember in life is singing. You know, everybody has that memory. I remember singing little, whatever it was. And then going up through church and uh, never knowing I was going to be a writer. You know, uh, I knew I was going to be a singer at 10 years old. You never know what's going to be the hit. That was just a filler song, Let the Good Time Roll. And it stood the test of time. It came out in 1967. I was about two years old then. Right. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm 71. I was born in 1941, and I feel 21. You sure do. And you, when you perform, you look 21. I'll tell uh, you that. I feel it good. But uh, uh, like I like I said, Gamblin' Huff. Uh, Huff was with uh, Johnny Madera. They did the one, two, three. And I did a song, Girl, don't make me wait too long. The reason I got that, Lynn Barry couldn't sing that high. And David, you have Real to Real back here? Yeah. Yeah. He had a big Real to Real. We didn't have the computers that you see on the desk. Now we have real to real, so you, you couldn't change a lot in music. Yeah, right. they, they you had, had to get it. You had to get it right. They had this great track, and Lenny couldn't hit it, and I hit it, so I got the song. So the following year, I got let the good time roll. The following year, the company folded, so I went on the road and I came back and I got with Gambling Huff. Then when I got with Gambling Huff, I was in the halls acting crazy, and Kenny told me go in a room and write with somebody. So I went in with this guy named Eugene Doge and started writing. And eventually he left the company and I, I stayed there. The first person I had a record on was Wilson Pickett, a song called International Playboy. Hmm. And Bumblebee, come on and sting me. You got it, not sting, sting me. Right. <laughs> the Roots, you, you did a record with The Roots and then Neo started sampling you and Outkast. What, tell me a little bit about that. Oh, uh, well, first of all, that came from Patti LaBelle, the one, uh, Somebody Loves You. That was sampled by, uh, who was it, N Nelly, Nelly and Kelly Rowland. And I, I think it did like eight million copies, mm -hmm. you know, and then Outkast did the same record, but they did a different part of it, but it was still the same, I paid, paid for both of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, the uh, one that Outkast did was on Madden's uh, the football thing. Mm -hmm. So those samples just go crazy. And Neo, I don't get down like that. Uh, Fifty Cent, Ski Mask, Biggie Smalls, uh, the Beef. In fact, they used my track, and they used something I was singing. I don't know how that fits into rap. I was a. <laughs> Which reminds me. That's something like I did on, and you never know. Right. I was explaining this to, a, I had an interview with a guy in over in England. He said, what is that? I said, that's so for yodeling. I said, it's not, oh, lo, le, lo, but it's no. You have to tremble in your throat the same way, but it has to have a soulful overtone. Well, uh, I really thank you, Bunny, for doing this show that's coming up. Um, you're going to see it uh, in just a bit. 
Um, Bunny is an amazing performer, which you will soon see, and uh, we're very fortunate to have you here, and I thank you very much. And uh, anybody wants to check out his new record, Bunny Sigler, from Bunny with Love, please do so. It's available on iTunes and everywhere they else. They go to www.bunzymusicandrecords.com.